talk about sinus node exit blocks or SA exit blocks. And so this is an exit block. I'm going to zoom in on this video on the sinus node. And this is what that means. This is a tricky concept. Sinus node. I'm going to zoom in on one. I'm going to draw a sinus node right here. This is my sinus node. And the sinus node has a couple different types of cells. But to simplify it, you've got the nodal kind of core. And then you've got these, you know, essentially kind of extensions that are sending that impulse that is generated from the sinus node out into the atria. And so we generate an impulse here. So impulse is generated. And then we need to send that impulse out into the atria. And so that we can depolarize the atria. So essentially what an SA exit block is when we are unable to send that signal into the atria. So we are unable to propagate to the atria. So the SA node itself is functional, but we are unable to transition that signal to the atria and create an atrial depolarization. So when we have a sinus exit block, we then we would see no P waves. Because if you think about it, the start of a P wave so right here is when the SA node fires. And that's exactly when it starts to capture in the atria. This part is blocked in an SA exit block. And there's a couple of different types of SA exit blocks. It's, it's funny. It's actually quite similar to AV node blocks, and it's interesting because when an AV node is um, made up of similar types of cells as the SA node. But SA node blocks, there are three types. So there um, is a first degree, and that means that we get signal plus delay of atria activation. This is not something that you can see on an EKG. So that just means that it takes more time from when this impulse is generated to whenever it gets through these fibers into the atria. It takes a little bit longer, but it happens every time. You have second degree, which is um, when uh, not all impulses from SA node depolarize the atria. And that's something that you can see on an EKG. And a third degree SA exit block is when no impulses cause atrial depolarization. That's obviously not great. And so remember, those intrinsic cells of the node itself that are creating that initial impulse, they work well in sinus exit block. But the fibers that are propagating that signal into those atrial cardiac cells that are capable of contracting and using that impulse isn't working. And so those are our degrees of SA node uh, exit blocks. Obviously, the best way to evaluate this is the in the electrophysiology lab where we can put little little electrodes in all of these different areas. But I do think that um, it is important to understand this concept and maybe even be able to identify it on the EKG. 
interestingly enough, um, the second degree, there are two different types, just like the AV node. So second degree, we've got type one, and type two. Type one, just like that winky box where uh, the interval between impulse and atrial depolarization lengthens. And interestingly, that actually will cause a shortened PAP interval. I'll show you an example of that here in a second. In a type two, this interval stays the same. Okay, and ultimately uh, we'll have a width dropped P waves. Just like a second degree type two AV block, the interval stays the same. In this case, it's just a different type of interval stays the same, right? Type ones, the the lengthen the interval will shorten until a drop. And on type one, this P2P interval will stay the same until it drops. So I hope that I hope that all makes sense. Obviously, third degree is not good. We are unable to depolarize the atrial with the SA node. This person needs a atrial pacemaker. First degree it's okay. Second degree is where we have to kind of um, use some, some more judgment to determine. So this is a rhythm strip example of a second degree, this is a second degree type one. This is going to be really hard to, um, to see. This is kind of an interesting rhythm here. It's old. It's just a lead strip of lead two. And so notice that the P to P interval becomes shorter and shorter, 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 right? These are P's, P, 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 P. And then we have a dropped P wave and then it resumes. And we have the same shortening of that P to P interval. We said in, in the previous video that that is a second degree type one as a block. And so remember what that means is that every time the sinus node fires, the sinus node intrinsically, if I draw my sinus node right here, whenever these cells create an impulse, they do that, you know, every 60 seconds. But whenever it's traveling out, it gets blocked. Traveling out, this is where the block is occurring. But the way this block works is that these cells that are sending that impulse out, those cells slow with every beat. So what's happening is the sinus node is firing off at the same rate every time, but each time it fires, it takes longer to get out. It takes longer to get out until it doesn't. So you have like a sinus node that fires here, takes time, and then it generates a P wave. Then it fires again, but it takes longer to generate that P wave. Then it fires again, and it takes longer to generate the P wave. And so the longer it takes to generate the P wave, the closer that P wave is to the previous P wave. So that's what's happening. That's why we're getting shortening of this P to P interval is because a sinus node, every time it's taking longer to get that impulse into the atria to generate the P wave. And so in this case, you see that all these beats are clustering and getting closer to each other until right here, 
it doesn't get out because it's unable to to send that impulse out and then it resets and then it starts the whole process all over again so this is a second degree type one uh, it's a really difficult concept this is a this is definitely a high level ekg concept and um so if you don't get it the first time that's okay but just re just recognize this pattern if you could really understand the pattern of the p waves are getting closer to each other because with each time the sinus node generates an impulse it's taking longer for it to reach the atria each consecutive time that causes the next p wave to occur closer to its predecessor I thought this was a great picture here uh, to depict a second degree. This is a second degree SA block. And let's talk through it. Let's talk through why it's second degree. I'm going to use this lead one rhythm strip here. So notice we've got P, QRS, P, QRS. Then we have this block or a pause and then we have pqrs 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 then another pause then a resumption okay. and so let's figure out what's going on in this pause here i do not see any atrial activity so i do see no P waves. So this could be a sinus pause. If you don't know what that is, go check that video out. It could be an SA exit block. We know that this would have to be a second degree because some of the P waves are there. And then there's not a P wave. So we know, S, we know second degree blocks um, behave in that fashion. And if it's a second degree block, what you're going what you can do is you can actually measure what is the normal P to P interval. So I look at this P wave, and I look at this P wave, and I count the small little boxes, and I get 23. boxes in that length and then if I take this interval from this P to this P realistically it should be two times this interval right because ideally there should be a P wave here but there's not but if it's an SA exit block we know that intrinsically in that sinus node, these cells here are firing. We're just not propagating the signal. It's getting blocked on the way out. And so the sinus node is firing, but it's just blocked. So there should still be exactly sinus node firings at exactly this rate. We're just unable to see a P wave because it can't generate. And if I count this interval between this P wave and this P wave, it's actually 46 little boxes, which is exactly 2x. And so that's a perfect way to figure out if this potentially could be a sinus exit block. The definitive study for an SA node exit block is going to be EP. So definitive is EP. But this EKG is a great example of a second degree type 2 SA block. That's a difficult concept. And don't mix this up with AV blocks. But in a second degree block, that's what we would see. And this chart down at the bottom I thought was really helpful. So this is time on the x axis. That's time. And what's occurring here is you see, we're gonna look at the V6 rhythm strip as we're looking at this. So right here, the sinus node fires. 
right here is when it captures the atria and sends that signal into the atria, and you see our P wave. Right, and this is our P wave. And then the AV node captures it and delays the signal. And when that's our PR interval that it creates, and then it passes that signal onto the ventricles when we get our QRS. So this is just a chart that shows that continuation. And so you get sinus node firing, atrial depolarization, sinus node firing, atrial depolarization. Right here, the sinus node fires, but it's blocked before it can depolarize the atria. And that's what we were talking about when we were measuring before. And then it resumes and it transmits, transmits, right? You see these P waves, transmits to a P wave, sinus node fires, P wave, sinus node fires, P wave. And then right here, same thing, sinus node fires, it blocks. So there is no P wave. So that's a sinus exit block. Right? You measure these intervals from the P to P. You should expect that right in the middle of those two, I should see a P wave, but I don't. And you can actually measure the interval before, add that to here, and it should be the same. And so that would be a second degree type two, where all the intervals stay the same until one of them gets blocked. So um, I hope this helps, and I uh, hope you guys have a great day. Thanks.